In this video, Functional Python, I want to talk about pattern matching. If you have used a functional language, you probably have enjoyed using pattern matching. Therefore, it is not surprising that this feature was added to Python. It was introduced in Python 3.10. The full documentation is in this URL. And it's similar to pattern matching in, in, ML, in the ML family of languages with, with the syntax very similar to that of, of OCaml. The code for this video, you can find it at this URL which I will post in the description. Let's start with an example of how to use it. The new keyword is called match and case. So match evaluates an expression and case is a sequence of constructors. And um, for each one of these constructors, you have a set of actions that you want to perform. Notice that only one of those cases is executed, all the others are avoided. They are done in order, so they are evaluated in order. And as typical with pattern matching, the underscore means match anything, okay? So let's look at this particular example and how it works. So uh, let me make it a little bit smaller so you can follow me. So here's the output of this code. Notice that if I pass uh, five to this function, it will not match anything because there is no pattern that matches the integer five. If I pass true, the same will happen. It will not match anything. However, if I pass 10, then the first option, the first case will match and then it will print, I got a 10. If I pass a tuple, five and 10, then it matches this case where the first value of the tuple is a five and then B. Now, the interesting thing here is that it's not only the comparison that is happening, but it's also binding the value of the second element. So in this case, we have a new binding called B, and then we can actually use it. So we can print whatever value we actually get on that. Um, let's use a name tuple. And uh, so in this case, we call the name tuple my record. So here's the constructor. And again, uh, if we need a constructor with two parameters, then we can specify the, bind the, the binding names for each one of them. In this case, A and B. Uh, same with the triplet. Uh, so we can actually bind it, all the elements, A, B, C, and then use them accordingly. <clears throat> Finally, this one is also an interesting one. This allows to do something similar to matching the head and the tail. So A will be the head and a star B will be the tail. So it allows us to match from a list a fixed number of elements and then whatever else matches. But the list should be, in this case, at least of size one, okay? So very, very interesting, very, very powerful. So the most powerful thing is that we really have a way to deconstruct the, the value that we're matching against. That's why this feature is called the structural pattern matching in Python, okay? So let's go to the next slide. We can also combine patterns. So we, in this case, for example, I'm saying, so I, I, I want to match val to 10 and b, a tuple 10 with a second value uh, that I will bind to b, or a tuple that starts with 20 and then it will bind a b. I'll show in a second that there are some restrictions with respect to the number of binding variables that we can match, and uh, but um, at least we can have more than one options and separated by the pipe. So in this particular case, uh, only the first and the third match. So why is that the second one doesn't match? Because the first value is 30 instead of 10 or 20. Okay. <clears throat> now, we must match the same names in both cases when we're using more than one case per case statement. So this code, for example, if the first value is 10, we, we want to create a binding called B, but if the first value is 20, we want to create a binding called A. The compiler will complain. So if I run this code, notice that it says alternative, bind alternative patterns bind different uh, names. So that's essentially an error. So that's not allowed in uh, Python, okay? Another interesting, powerful feature of structural pattern matching 
is that we can decompose dictionaries. So for example, let's assume that val is a dictionary. So, well, actually val can be any value, but if it is a dictionary, we match a dictionary because we specified the braces, which is the way that we can create manually a dictionary. If this dictionary has the attributes name and address, then it will extract the values of name e to a, address in b, and then uh, we can uh, use them within the case, within the code of the case. Very, very nice and very, very powerful. <clears throat> so let's run this code. And as you can see, the first dictionary has name and address, and it can have other attributes. So that's okay. We can still uh, use this dictionary. So the pattern match doesn't say it only has to have this. The pattern match means it has at least these attributes. However, if one of the attributes doesn't exist, like in this case, name doesn't exist, then the pattern, the pattern will not be matched. It will be skipped and then we'll go to the case, uh, the case with the underscore. It's good practice to always have um, fail safe case, the underscore, and that's its purpose. Uh, it means match anything, okay? They can also be used for type checking because we can use the constructors for each uh, data type um, in each one of the cases. And um, so this essentially is kind of similar to asking, is this a string? Is this an int? Is this a dictionary? Is this a list? Is this a tuple? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it just does that accordingly. There are some limitations. And I believe that these limitations have to do with uh, some of the idiosyncrasies of Python and also with some of the limitations being a dynamically typed language. Uh, first of all, a single simple pattern matches everything. So let's assume that I say case of A. This essentially is a pattern that will match anything that we have in Val. It doesn't really matter uh, what. So if I run this code, it will actually say name capture A makes remaining patterns unreachable. So this pattern essentially makes our code uh, useless. So the compiler at least will complain and, uh, and it will not run the code, which is actually a, a good thing. Uh, but this one will work. So um, look at this in this case. And um, so in this particular instance, then I don't really have any other pattern after, so it's essentially equivalent to the underscore uh, pattern. So this will actually execute. And this is a good example that this pattern actually matches everything. As you can see, uh, no matter what we pass to it, it will actually do it. Uh, let's add another one, test PM, and let's pause, uh, pass false, and it will match it, okay. Uh, another interesting aspect is that from the point of view of a structural matching, a list is a tuple and a tuple is a list, as long as they have the same number of elements. So there's no distinguishing between them. Unfortunately, there's no warning if we have uh, this case. So uh, in this particular match, I'm matching first a pair, and then I'm matching a list of two. I notice that I pass um, two of the, uh, two, um, sorry, I pass uh, a pair in the first one and not at and a list of two elements in the second one. And uh, so notice that in both cases, the pattern that is matching is pair, okay? It doesn't match list, even though this is a list, okay? And uh, so in fact, let's do the following. Let's print type of val. And that's actually that in both cases, we're actually printing pair, even though it's a tuple and a list. And it also works the other way around. So if I put the list before the pair, then it will match the list before. So is the code exactly same as, as above? And in this case, then um, it matches first the list and it will never match the tuple. So we just have to be a little bit aware, aware of that. Nonetheless, it's a very powerful feature with some intrinsic limitations and um, Here's the link for more information. And the PEP has a very good tutorial on how to use these features and goes into details on how structural matching, pattern matching is done. And again, the code for this video, you can find it in GitHub. And that's all for this video. Thank you.